Can Will Smith recover his career after what he did at the Oscars with the now famous slap that went around the world? That's the question that's on everybody's lips because at first it seemed like he wasn't actually going to get punished for it, but since then the story's dragged on and on and now he is actually facing consequences. Sony has halted work on Bad Boys 4, but that's not the only job that he's actually been up for losing. Also, Netflix has stopped its production of Fast and Loose. The thing is, neither of these seem to be cancellations. It seems more like a wait and see. We'll wait to see if he can actually get through this. Will the fire actually die down or is he negatively affected permanently? from what he's actually done, because there is mixed feelings about this. A while ago, we had Hollywood Reporter coming out and going, no, he's not actually kryptonite yet. But this was quite early on, on March the 30th, as people were kind of analyzing the long-term effects on his career. Because at the time, he had a lot of people come out and standing up for him, as well as attacking him. Because people like Denzel Washington, who's quite liked overall, is coming out and saying, who are we to condemn him? And quite frankly, I think I'm somebody that hasn't gone and slapped someone at the Oscars. I do think that the attitude of who are we to condemn him implies that we've all done that. Oh yeah, we've all gone around randomly slapping people who just made an innocuous comment. It's like, no, not really. That may be normal in your world, but it, it's not in mine. But what we're witnessing is a perceptional battle. And I don't actually think that the generic man on the street's opinion matters in any of this. I don't think even most of them care. This is being waged by the journalists who seem to have axes to grind either way, and it seems to be revolve around how long the story is going, and it's definitely carried on. Because at first you had the Academy coming out and going, oh, we don't condone any form of violence, which was ridiculous when they gave him an Oscar at the end of it. <laughs> but then you had them later going back and going, oh, we're investigating it. We want to see what's wrong. I mean, I don't really know what there was to investigate. It was on camera. We all saw exactly what happened. And then even then it dragged on as more people came in to comment and Will Smith even came out and apologized and then later just quit the Oscars altogether. And as many people said, that won't make his troubles go away. But who knows, maybe that was some kind of deal to see that, you know, we won't publicly take this award from you if you step down from ever turning up again. But the issue is, the longer all this goes, the worse it looks for everyone involved. And it starts to lead to articles like this. Can his career ever recover? Can Will Smith recover from the Oscars fallout? Because the longer the story drags on for, the more the pressure builds. And as we've seen in other areas like Disney, the longer something goes on for and the more the pressure builds, eventually they start to have more meetings and like, well, we can't just stay silent. We have to do something. And in this case, the only thing they can do is take his roles away from him. So he really needs this to go get brushed under the carpet and something else to take over the news cycle. Because while I despise journalists, when it comes to perceptional battles, uh, they really do hold the keys to this guy's entire career right now. And they're kind of not the people that you want spotlighting you for long periods of time. But that said, there have been some things which have played in his favor. Because so far, neither of the properties have come out and just outright canceled it. One thing you find is that when the first person cancels you, everybody else follows because then they suddenly feel even more pressure to actually appear like the good guys and they just start following the crowd. This is also a good thing in the fact that Will Smith doesn't seem to have that many sponsors either. One of the worst things that can happen is one of your sponsors comes out and publicly goes, we can no longer associate with this guy, and then it chain reacts down all your other sponsors and everybody feels the need to follow the same way. Then it moves the story away from something that possibly minor that you may have recovered from, onto this guy is getting cancelled, everyone is ditching him, look how horrible this guy is, and the fact that you're getting cancelled then becomes the story that drives the other cancellations. This sponsorship cancellation cycle is why I'm such a fan of what Daily Wire is doing with Jeremy's razors. Essentially, they said that if a sponsor wants to stop advertising with us, that's fine. You do it privately. But when you publicly come out and condemn the person you were sponsoring, uh, no. You don't stand for that, and you come out with both barrels and burn everything. I think the fact that they are coming out and teaching the sponsors that things like that have consequences is an amazing, amazing play. So the fact that actually these kind of shows aren't just outright saying, no, it's all over, we're firing him publicly, is a good sign that he could recover. But one of the issues when it comes to perception is how you were perceived before. If actually people thought you're a bit of a lad and you kind of do weird, funky things, then you can get away with a lot more because people expect it from you when you're still hanging around. But Will Smith was never like that. Will Smith always put across this kind of holier-than-thou, perfect kind of family man kind of vibe, and even in his apology speech, he's still trying to do the same. It really doesn't work because then when you come out against that, uh, suddenly your entire image is shot. 
This is why in the BBC article, when it describes his career as mortally wounded, I'm also not that surprised. The idea that people can relate to Will Smith, feel like he's somebody they could look up to and they want to admire, pretend that, hey, that could be me up on their screen. There's a real sense of relatability that's been taken away with a gesture, because most of us don't go around randomly slapping people because they made a comment about a film. He's built a persona over many, many years, and this was a complete break in that persona. People were absolutely shocked, and it was followed by a subsequently rather peculiar acceptance speech. This is a big change from what people know and expect from Will Smith. If you want to go around slapping people, some people can actually probably get away with that pretty fine. And Will Smith isn't one of them. And as I said in my last video, I actually feel pretty sorry for him, because to me, this is kind of just a broken man with a horrible home life. Which is why in his resignation letter, he suggested, I'm committed to doing work to ensure that I never again allow violence to overtake reason. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do, dude? Are you going to get a divorce? Because that seems to be the only thing that could guarantee that. And let's face it, it's probably better for everyone involved. But instead, The Guardian suggests that he may reveal he's undergoing therapy for anger issues and perhaps take up charity work for a period. Yeah, because that'll look completely legitimate. Yeah, I've, I've slapped someone now and now I'm going to do some work at a homeless shelter. No one's going to see through that. Seriously, this is the kind of thing that only Hollywood could do? Oh no, we've got caught doing something quick! Let's fake like we care about it! <laughs> but the best part of this entire thing was he already has a platform for a confessional interview on his wife's talk show, Red Table Talk. Yeah, because the last time he did that, it went amazing for him, didn't he? You know, that was basically the thing that blew apart his entire relationship and exposed the exact reason why he went and did this. And you saw a guy's soul leave his body in real time during the interview. I don't exactly think doing that in public is going to help him again. And the only word I can think for that entire relationship is completely and utterly toxic. Will Smith doesn't need therapy. He needs a divorce lawyer. And the last thing we need is some kind of weird struggle session on his wife's talk show like we had last time, where he's desperately trying to put forward some kind of brave face as you can literally see a man break in front of your very eyes. It's a horrific video to watch, and quite frankly, I don't want it repeated again. <laughs> and one thing I find interesting is this specific paragraph, because it almost sounds like they're floating the idea to the public to see what they think about it. Because if you notice, it goes specifically about therapy for anger issues and takes up charity work as well as perhaps have an interview on Red Table Talk. And this is from The Guardian. Which makes it all the more peculiar then when the BBC said this. Well, there may be charity work or there may be a public announcement about therapy or anger management. There may even be an obligatory confessional interview, perhaps on Red Table Talk. This is the same paragraph as this on two entirely different websites written by different people. I don't know, maybe the stars aligned and they both just had the same thinking. Or maybe there are people behind the scenes working for PR companies who might be trying to float ideas about what he can possibly do to save his career. I'll leave the decision on that one up to you. <laughs> so Denzel Washington says, who are we to condemn? And I'm like, eh. I don't even think we're going to. I don't think your average person's opinion in the street matters at all. This is a war of the journalists. This is a war of perception in the press. And it's just going to depend if another topic comes up fast enough before they actually need more clicks to go through. Because otherwise, they're going to continue talking about Will Smith. And the more they talk about him, the closer he gets to getting permanently cancelled, rather than just all of his shows slowly over time put on hold. At this point in time, the best thing that can happen is that some big major news story comes along and just knocks him straight out of the journalist's mouths. But otherwise, uh, this could do some permanent damage on him. Very clear that nobody wants it to happen to him, because otherwise they would have just cancelled him days ago, rather than just putting things on hold to see if it blows over. But like most companies, they are very vulnerable to public pressure. And by public pressure, it generally means Twitter and journalists. So it's going to be a very interesting few days to see where that news cycle goes and uh, just how many journalists Will Smith has as any good side or on his bad side because everything matters at this point. And this could be decided even faster if uh, someone in Hollywood decides that the best way to get some extra clout for themselves is actually to throw somebody else onto the bus. Because in that circle, the worst thing you can be is someone which is popular to hate. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, like the video and subscribe. More videos in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.